the minute and I suddenly came to the conclusion that I wasn't going to keep up with it so I stayed at the top of the hill and watched it and uh, I watched it come down and pass over Cheltenham itself and uh, uh, I can't believe what I felt but I felt that uh, I wish the hell I had a helicopter or something that I could have pursued this thing because somewhere deep inside I wanted to know so I went back home and uh, my flat was on the uh, top floor and I could climb out onto the roof which I did uh, with a blanket and pillow and I stayed there till about four o'clock in the morning uh, watching to see if it would come back and it didn't watched satellites come over the horizon steady altitude and steady speed and watched high altitude jets go by and that was it and the next morning uh, the uh, landlord uh, who was one of the chief chefs at the Queen's Hotel Cheltenham uh, uh, who was the landlord uh, put on a small breakfast for us in the morning included in the rent which was nice and uh, I went in there sat down and uh, uh, we had a chap in there uh, that um, uh, that was uh, working for a bank he was in his suit and uh, another chap that uh, uh, worked for uh, a car vehicle company and we were chatting away and he said uh, he said what were you doing last night he said you woke me up and I said I'm sorry but I think I saw a UFO last night and uh, I explained what happened and what I did and he chuckled and uh, as I said that the guy with the newspaper dropped it and he said did you say something about a UFO and I said yeah and he said I think you better look at this and he handed me the paper and uh, there was a drawing on there, UFO sighted by many, many people over the, over the uh, town of Cheltenham. And he said, you want to phone up? And I said, phone up? You've got to be joking. Every crap bot in bloody area would be doing that, uh, especially after it being published. Uh, it's a bit late now, isn't it? So uh, we, we uh, completely cancelled it out. But I always kept an open mind. Uh, but the acceleration and uh, zero inertia of this thing uh, uh, moving as quick as it did, uh, and then stopping dead uh, was surely nothing uh, that I've ever encountered in the way of aviation on this planet. I'm not saying that it wasn't from this planet, all I know is that uh, whatever I saw uh, was something a little special. But who knows? Who knows? But that was my encounter anyway uh, of uh, what I record as an unidentified flying object. Not necessarily alien, but who knows? Uh, uh, back to you, Al. Yeah, okay. Well, yep. Uh, we had something like that happen to us uh, when we were about, oh, heck. I imagine we were about seven years old. And uh, <clears throat> we had this big vacant lot across the street from our, house, our home and uh, where they had tore down some uh, factory buildings and hadn't done anything with it. And we used this... Uh, big old lot as a playground all the kids did uh, in my double block uh, our block was two blo two blocks long and uh, <clears throat> all the kids would play up there on that that, that that was our playground you know of course we got a lot of scrapes and, and all that kind of stuff and, and uh, a couple of guys got hit hit in the head with BB guns and the sling shots and all this kind of crap but we always was playing war and carrying on up there cowboys and Indians but this particular night, uh, we weren't playing in the street. We used to use chalk to make circles, and uh, we had that one special game that we played that they called war. And, you know, we I, I declare war, and so and so and so and so, and everybody uh, would run, and you, you try to get to one of them and take some of their land. Anyway, we was up in the, in the vacant lot. <laughs> We had dug a little hole, you know, and, and we had some taters. And what we were doing was so-called baking potatoes up there in the lot. And uh, it, it wasn't very late at night because the uh, streetlights had just come on. It hadn't been on very long. And uh, we, was, we was up there. <clears throat> and we had the fire going, and we was baking these potatoes, you know. And then we seen this thing. It uh, came over the horizon, and, uh, uh, you know, we all was looking at it, you know, we seen it coming, you know, we figured it was a plane or something, you know, it, it didn't make, you know, much sense that it would be anything other than a plane, 
That's the only thing we could ever see that would fly. And we was uh, baking our taters, and we was watching this doggone thing. And um, it, it got bigger and bigger, and, and, and you know, it got about the size of a, uh, oh, not quite as the size of a, a regular moon, but uh, a little bit smaller than that. And um, it was pulsating, and, and, and the colors that really uh, got my attention, that were really pretty, was the yellow and orange. That was really, that, that's what really caught my eye. I said, boy, that's your last night. That's pretty, you know, and the guy, we, we, so we laid down on our backs, you know, out there in the doggone lot, and watched this thing for a while. And it, it it was up there for about oh, 10, 15 minutes, and, and, and then it, it didn't fly away. It just vanished, and it was gone. And uh, naturally, all the kids went home and told their parents about it. I told mine about it, you know, and, and, and my mother kind of smiled at me, you know. She said, well, good grief. Uh, you guys didn't see nothing, you know, and, and this, that, and the other. But we all seen it. It was about six or seven of us out there, uh, all boys, and no little girls with us that particular night. And uh, and I always remember that 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 was something else. And uh, I wasn't thinking about no aliens, you know, because uh, we were playing cowboys and Indians back then, and, and Superman, and and that kind of crap. Uh, so, um, well, I, we will never know what it was, I, and I wasn't reading the paper at seven years old, so I don't know whether anybody else seen it or not. What do you think about that, Martin? Uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, um, KF4, you and Jay, uh, if you want to come in. Uh, <clears throat> bit of a wet, far right conversation here the, uh, today. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's what this one was doing. Uh, it had pulsating, uh, not a, not that I could see very brightly, but there were shades of yellow and uh, orange, or uh, some dully red, uh, whatever going on. Uh, but the greater of the sphere was uh, uh, was pulsating white with uh, changing colours, probably towards the lower lower half of it. And if that corresponds with your sighting. Uh, Al, uh, but uh, yeah, that's uh, that's uh, basically what I saw, and uh, <coughs> uh, who knows? Who no, no, who who knows what it is, uh, or or who's piloting it? If anything, or uh, if it's a re remote unit, uh, I think we could all want to jump to conclusions that it's from a different world. Uh, it well could be from this world. Who knows what's kept out of the uh, public view and eye, uh, but. Uh, 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 this was uh, must be uh, through 30 odd years ago uh, when I saw this uh, sighting. I've only seen something similar uh, once, and I, I wasn't sure what it was. Uh, me and Sue were parked up on a hill somewhere back in the old CB days, uh, as you did, and uh, uh, some bright light. Uh, in the distance came up the side of the hillside uh, approximately three miles from us uh, another clear night obviously and uh, it tracked up the side of the hill uh, it then uh, almost got to the top of the hill and then went straight up straight vertical and disappeared uh, very very rapidly uh, but uh, didn't do any maneuvers and I didn't see it streak across the sky it just disappeared up and uh, just disappeared out of sight and uh, we both looked at each other and went, uh -uh. <laughs> made a joke of it, another damn alien ship. <laughs> but uh, who the hell knows what it was? It, it, it could have been a parachute flare or something and got caught up in some uh, vertical air or something. Uh, but uh, the first uh, sighting I had was definitely not a flare. Uh, so, uh, uh, and I'm sure a lot of people that lived in Cheltenham Town didn't think so either. Uh, but they probably had a better look at it because to me it looked uh, as if it was getting larger and larger uh, as it uh, dropped down in altitude uh, from the hillside I was at, uh, which was up near uh, one of the Cheltenham uh, posh girl colleges up on top there, uh, which I always liked passing because uh, a number of girls were always uh, are still awake shouting at the windows asking either myself or my friends to come over. 
and to get into trouble, uh, which we never did. So uh, uh, we, uh, we we took the, the the coward's way out. But uh, uh, I must admit that night I was uh, uh, I was so wishing that I had some sort of uh, vehicle where I could have kept up with it and uh, a decent uh, a decent camera. Uh, the photographic evidence, uh, considering the amount of the, the amount of sightings that we have, is always never that good. Generally done with shaky camcorders, uh, and uh, I'm sure a, a huge amount of it uh, is it can be explained away uh, through natural uh, circumstances. And of course, there's a hell of well, there's probably a small percentage of that that can't, and it's uh, it's it's getting through all the. Uh, uh, it's getting through all the rubbish and ending up with something that uh, is similar. Uh, and I know I did see a program about some old poor old lady that uh, lived uh, somewhere out in the uh, wild somewhere with a small cottage were woken one uh, early morning by, uh, by a bright light shining through her window. And uh, she went outside and she also saw a round pulsating light of quite large diameter and uh, with also interchanging colors hovering uh, about 30 40 feet uh, just outside the boundary of her uh, property and uh, no it didn't land no damn aliens got out and uh, did their experiments it just sat there for a short while uh, brilliant light and uh, then went straight up uh, it just literally went straight up into the cloud as quickly as uh, it takes almost to uh, just flick your eye and that was her report and uh, its similarity to uh, to what I saw and what you just described Al is uh, was uncanny uh, I'm not a great believer of these damn machines that come down and they're saucer shaped and uh, uh, and uh, aliens get out and say hi and or zap you or take you inside and give you anal probes. Now, I'm not sure I <laughs> believe all that stuff, but uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, if, if it was alien in any description uh, that uh, uh, they can, uh, uh, they, they have uh, the capabilities of doing a lot more than, uh, than people think. I, I'm not sure on the saucer shape thing, to be totally honest with you, but uh, hey, uh, who, who knows? Okay, Al. <laughs> Uh, I'll pass it back to you. I'm going to go and grab myself a sandwich. Uh, it's 14.50 here. I haven't had anything since, since this morning. Uh, all being I did chomp on a couple of uh, uh, sausage rolls, uh, which has left left me with stomach acid. So uh, I'm going to dive off shortly, Al, and uh, grab another cup of coffee or a orange juice or something, and and so forth. But uh, 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 regarding propulsion and any anti gravity wave. Uh, it's quite it's quite an interesting subject that uh, most scientists are working on. NASA has it quiet. They reckon they know something more than what they're letting on. Uh, producing a gravity wave around the vehicle, which cancels out mass gravity attraction, and uh, it's all to do with uh, streamlining uh, atoms uh, before you manipulate them uh, at a certain resonance in a magnetic field, and uh, it's quite interesting stuff. And uh, I've read pl plenty of papers from top scientists and physicists, uh, which suggest this is uh, this, this is capable, uh, but uh, wouldn't be a cheap uh, uh, wouldn't be a cheap thing to produce. You'd have to have a lot of money behind you, even to make a prototype. And there uh, was some suggestion that uh, uh, that this has already been attempted uh, with good results, and. Uh, also, some contract uh, work has been sent out uh, for building a prototype, which just generally gets leaked out now and again, but uh, you've got to be careful of leaked information because uh, that's important, that uh, some information that is leaked out is deliberately leaked out to uh, uh, to send you on a wild goose chase, of course. Anyway, ran you out, and uh, I'll disappear for about five, ten minutes, so I'm going to go make myself a drink and uh, uh, make myself a sandwich over. Okay. Good morning to you, Kurt. Uh, got it. I hope you're having a good day. Anyway, yeah, you know, um, thinking back on that uh, thing we've seen, I, I can't remember whether it was 
oblong or a weird shape or anything like that because the uh on the on the ends of the thing it was kind of fuzzy but the the center was was uh, definitely you know we could see that really well and uh i can't remember whether it was round or oblong or what the heck the shape was come figure that i hadn't, hadn't even thought about that uh but anyway it was something that happened and like i said it was five or six of us up there it was about seven kids up there i'm pretty sure because we all played together on a constant basis every day, and we all went to school together and the whole works. And we all went in together. Usually when the street lights came on, the mothers would be hollering out the window, hollering your name, and uh, uh, letting you know the street lights are on and get your butt in the house. So uh, there you go. At any rate, no biggie. Uh, shucks. Uh, <laughs> Uh, KB1, 0 CF, uh, no, that's not a 0, that's OCS, okay, if you like to stop, no, no, okay, <laughs> uh, well, I know Kurt ain't gonna pop in here, cause he's busy all the time, and so, um, anyway, well, hey, have you heard, uh, have you heard Bob on, uh, uh, this morning, Bob, are you, are you, are you up and listening this morning? It depends on which Bob you're talking about. There's a lot of Bobs on here. Too many, I think. Uh, <laughs> I'm here. I'm. 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 Uh, I didn't get enough sleep last night, so I'm just kind of in a fog. And uh, I'm thinking about doing this or doing that, and I just can't get out of my chair. So I am gonna go back and make another cup of coffee, though. That's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, dude, I gotta go outside and uh, water my turtle doves in my garden. And uh, what's left of it in this Texas heat? Dang, it's hot. It's gonna be another hot day anyway. It's, I guess you can't do nothing about it. Wait for wait for fall and winter. That's the season. And uh, anyway, that's what I'm about. Nothing else to say. And uh, turn it back to the group. Over, over. Yeah, okay, Bob. Yeah, you go ahead and do what you got to do. And uh, yeah, you talk about you're in a fog. <laughs> probably all these guys out here and gals that are listening to me and Martin, they probably think we're in a fog too. But uh, hey, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll kind of catch up we'll with you guys a little later on. And uh, uh, being that the bottom of this cup is just about out of cu coffee, I, I might as well go ahead and grab me a cup while uh, while Martin gets something to feed his face and uh, and you get a chance to go out and water your garden. And talk about watering your garden, uh, <laughs> Bob. Uh, we had a good rain yesterday, and it was overcast most of the day, and then it got kind of muggy. And this morning is 72 degrees, the sun's up, not a cloud in the sky, so uh, maybe we're going to have a fairly decent day today. Okay, guys, we'll catch you a little later on. This is N0 Delta Papa. Oh, boy. And uh, we'll catch you guys in a little bit or so.